Welcome to our midweek devotional here. I'm Pastor Mike. Uh, we're glad that you joined us today. I want to let you know, if you've got a prayer request, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, email us at harboroaksprayerline at gmail.com. harboroaksprayerline at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to pray for you. So please reach out to us. Let us know how we can intercede on your behalf. Well, I'm sure I'm not the first to tell you, but Merry Christmas. And uh, it is the season. We are in the last month of the year. And, of course, the last month of the year is the Christmas season. So, as, as they say, tis the season, tis the reason. And, of course, Christmas has everything to do with Jesus. And so, so today we're, we're going to be talking about that. Jesus really is the reason for the season. Today I want to talk to you about the role of angels uh, in the Christmas story. If you go through the Christmas story, you see angels figure prominently uh, in Scripture. And they figure... Uh, they show up big time in the birth narrative. And so what about the angels? What is their role? What, what is the, why, why, was, why did God use them? What's the deal? Well, first of all, you have to understand the context of angels are messengers. Angels are messengers. And so first of all, I want us to see, and we're looking, we're looking at passages in Luke 1, over in, the, in Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 2, Matthew chapter 1, Matthew chapter 2. That's where we find the Christmas story. So first of all, in Luke chapter 1, we find an angel showed up to Zechariah, um, the Zechariah who was uh, serving in the temple. And so when the angel showed up, what was his message? Because every angels literally mean, the word angel means messenger. So what was this angel's message? Well, the message was you're going to have a son. If you understand, his, him and his wife Elizabeth, they were unable to have children. They didn't have any children, and they, they were well along in years. Uh, but the message was, you're going to have a son. Congratulations, Zechariah. Woohoo! And you're going to have a son. And that was the message. And his son would be would be named John, John the Baptist. Okay, and he was the forerunner of Christ. And so the angel announced this message to Zechariah: You're going to have a son. Congratulations. That was his message. Over and uh, continuing in Luke chapter one, we see the angel Gabriel. This time the angel is named. Not all angels aren't always named. But here he is. Um, the angel is named Gabriel and shows up to a young girl named Mary. Just out of the blue in her daily routine, what was that angel's message? Well, the message, as you probably already guessed, is you're going, you were chosen, you're blessed uh, to be the one to carry and give birth to the Messiah. You're the one that was chosen for that. What a message that was. The angel just stopped, showed up, and got a message for you, Mary. You're going to be the one that delivers the Christ child, the Messiah, the long-awaited one. So we find that in Luke chapter 1. And third, we, we continue to look at, in Luke chapter 1 and going into Luke chapter 2. We see an angel shows up to Joseph. See, Joseph was Mary's fiance. And Joseph, after learning that Mary was pregnant, was about to divorce her. He loved her. He didn't want to embarrass her. He was going to do this privately. And he was contemplating how he was going to do this and be able to save face for Mary and the family. While he was doing so, an angel shows up to him uh, in a dream. This, what was that angel's message? That angel's message was this. It's okay, Joseph, for you to marry Mary. Matter of fact, you, we want you to marry Mary. She's been faithful to you. She's carrying the Messiah. And so it's completely okay for you to go ahead and marry her. And matter of fact, we want you, just like he shared with Mary, I want you to name him Jesus. Name your son Jesus. Name the baby that is born Jesus. So Joseph gets that message. And then an angel shows up again in Luke chapter 2, again to Joseph, and again in a dream. And he's warning him about Herod, King Herod. And he warns him about King Herod's intentions to kill the Christ child. King Herod didn't want any competition uh, and he saw this baby who the wise men announced, hey, the king of the Jews is here. Where, where is he at? The angels shared with Joseph, hey, you need you and your family need to go to Egypt uh, because Herod seeks to, the death of the child. So the angel warns Joseph, you need to leave. And, he, and again, a little bit later when Herod dies, angel shows up again in a dream and, has, and tells him, what's the message? Says, Herod's dead, you can come back. Uh, it's okay. Uh, it's all good. And you come back to your hometown. Come back to Nazareth. Uh, come back to Israel. And so that's exactly what he did. You see, so God used angels in, in this 
and the Christ story and the Christmas story to inform and to guide Joseph and Mary and ultimately the Messiah, Jesus. And so angels were the ones that were being the ones to deliver that message. So today we still have a messenger and a message. And so you might, we might not be so seeing a whole lot of angels now, but we have the message of Christ. You see, the mess, who is the messenger today? The messenger is the bride of Christ, the church. The bride of Christ has the message of God, which is to be delivered to the people. You see, the church is the bride of Christ, and Christ is the head of the church. Christ instituted this. Um, and and we see that in Scripture and the Gospels, and so the, the church is front and center, and the mission of Christ because Christ founded it, and so the baby Jesus in the Christmas story becomes the man Jesus who would die for the sins of the world. You see, that's the message, the message, the Christmas message. There's a baby born. He's the he's the he's the awaited one. He is the Messiah. He's the one that came. He's the one that was born. He's the one that lived. He's the one that died so that we could live. He paid for our sins. But not only that, he rose again on the third day, and he's alive today. You see, the reality is, is that that message still needs to be carried out by the messengers. And not only the church is the messengers, but guess what? It's not a church collectively per se. But it's each individual person who, who is a part of the church, uh, who is the church, um, the family of God. And so people still need Jesus. They do. Even now, it's really, really relevant right now. The message of Christ, of the gospel, of the good news is relevant. And people still need to hear him. The world still needs Jesus. So in a very real sense, we as children of God, we are very much like angels. We have God's message much like the angels did, and we are to share God's message just like the angels did. And the message that we share is the message of the gospel. The gospel is the message that we carry. Good news for mankind. There is a Savior. He's been born. He loves you. He died for you. And he wants you to be a part of his family. You see, that's the message. We're the messengers. That's the message that we carry out. The good news of Jesus Christ. It's the greatest gift anyone could ever receive. So we're in very in our very real sense. We're much like the angels of Bible times. We take the message of Christ and we share it. We may not do it with all the glitz and glamour that an angel did, but that's exactly what we do. We have the same message of Christ. He loves, he lives, and he desires for us to be a part of his family. Let's take that message out because there's so many people who haven't heard that message. So many people need to hear that message. Will we? Father, today I want to thank you, Lord, for the message we find in the Christmas story, Lord, of the angels delivering the news to Mary and Joseph and Zechariah of what you are all about and what you're doing. Father, I'm thanking you, thanking you also, Lord, that you allow us to take that message, the message of the gospel of peace and hope to a world that needs to hear it, Father. Lord, I pray that you would continue to use us, Lord, to take that message of the gospel out to those who desperately need to hear it. Lord, I pray that this Christmas season, Lord, that we can take that hope and share it. Thank you, Father, for Jesus and giving him and his life for us so that we may know you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you for joining us today for our midweek devotional. I want to encourage you to join us on Sunday, December 20th. Um, that will be when our Christmas choir, our choir does a Christmas cantata, rather, musical. Um, it's called A Night to Remember. And we would love to have you either in person or you can watch us virtually online. We'd love to have you be a part of that wonderful musical experience. So join us here on Sunday, a little after 11 o'clock, and uh, we'd love to have you be a part of that. I want to thank you, and you have a blessed day.